All right, let's take a look at example two of evaluating the definite integral of a absolute value function. In this case, we're going from zero to two pi of, and we're taking the definite integral of the absolute value of cosine of x from zero to two pi. So this is gonna be not as simple as x. However, it's the same exact steps. So remember, step one is to figure out where this graph crosses the x-axis. And we're talking about the function that's inside of the absolute value bars. So just take this, set it equal to zero, figure out where it crosses the x-axis. In order to do that, you'll take arc cosine of both sides. So you're basically figuring where on the unit circle does x or cosine equal zero. That's going to be at pi over two, at point is zero comma one on the unit circle, and at three pi over two at zero comma negative one. So that's where this graph that's inside of the absolute value bars crosses the x-axis. That means we're going to split our definite integral up into those x-intercepts. So our original limits are from 0 to 2 pi, but because it crosses at these two places, we will end up with three different integrals. The first one is from 0 to pi over 2, our first x-intercept of cosine of x, absolute value. The second one is from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, so our two x-intercepts. And the third one is from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, all of absolute value of cosine of x. Now, we just learned from the previous example that because we're taking the, the definite integral of an absolute value function, that will always give us a positive area back. And since we've broken it up into our x-intercepts, we can now take these absolute value bars and move them to the outside of our definite integral. So step three is to move the absolute, absolute let me spell that, absolute value to the outside of each integral. Okay, so we're just taking these absolute value bars, moving them to the outside, and that way we can now find the definite integral of cosine of x, since the absolute value bars are on the outside. We can do that for each piece. That's nice that, you know, we only have to find one antiderivative, in this case, of cosine. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, and then you're just going to transfer your limits over to evaluate the definite integral, and go from there. And so step four is to just evaluate the definite integral. Again, you do the you take the antiderivative and then you plug in your upper and lower limits. So the first one is sine of pi over two minus sine of zero. The second one is sine of three pi over two minus sine of pi over two. And the third one is sine of two pi minus sine of three pi over two. Now notice I'm keeping my absolute value bars around these because if we get a negative number back, we'll just take the absolute value of that since the area under the curve of any absolute value function is always positive. Well, for our first one, we get absolute value of 1, so it remains positive 1. The second one, we do get a negative number back. We get negative 2 back. It's basically 1 minus, uh, sorry, it's negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. But the absolute value of that is positive 2. Our last piece is going to be uh, 0 minus negative 1, which is positive 1. So it will remain positive. But when we take the absolute value of all those, we get positive 4 back, which gives us the area under the curve of the absolute value of cosine of x plus from 0 to 2 pi. Again, if you're finding the area under the curve of an absolute value function, your answer is always going to be positive. An absolute value function is always above the x-axis. It's taking any x, any y value that you get back and making it positive, even if it's a negative. Let's take a look at the graph of this and see what it looks like. Okay, here was the definite integral that we were trying to figure out in our original question. This is the absolute value of cosine of x. Notice that everything on this graph is above the x-axis. Now again, the key points here are where it crosses the x-axis. If we look at our function without the absolute value bars, we see, see that that middle piece that we had uh, negative 2 will become positive since all you're doing is taking it and flipping it above the x-axis to get absolute value of cosine of x. The other two pieces were already positive, so we kept them positive. When we add all three of these pieces up, let's move up here if we can. When we add all these positive pieces up, 1, 2, and 1, we get positive 4 which confirms the fact that the integral from 0 to 2 pi of the absolute value of cosine of x 
is equal to 4. That's it for a second example of definite integral of the absolute value function. If you have any other questions about this, let me know.